Let's see now. One of the uh, striking differences between solid and a fluid, besides the fact that fluid can flow, is the fact that we can often get into a fluid, while it's not so easy to get into a solid, I mean, you have to drill a hole or something like that. Um, in fact, we live inside a fluid, don't we? What's that fluid? Yes, that's the air itself. And of course, uh, uh, you look at a fish, a fish lives inside another fluid, that's water. Okay, if we get into a fluid such as air or water, uh, if we dive into water, for example, the deeper we go, the higher the pressure we feel, right? So let us now take a look at how the pressure varies as you get deeper and deeper into a fluid. We know that the pressure increases because the deeper you go, the more the pressure has to increase in order to support the weight of the fluid that's above it. In particular, how does that depend on the depth? Uh, let's say we have a container uh, which contains a liquid, say water. Okay, and let's choose a coordinate system starting from the surface of that fluid going down. Uh, over here I have air pressure, okay? This is the air pushing down. And the air pressure, PA. It is otherwise known as atmospheric pressure. Uh, to figure out how the pressure inside the water changes as a function of the depth Y, uh, let us isolate a little slab of water, okay? This slab is horizontal. The top and bottom area are both equal to A. Okay. The pressure at the top is P, and the pressure at the bottom is a little bit greater. It's P plus DP. The reason why is you have to have a greater pressure upward than downward in order to balance the weight of this little slab, right? If the mass is dm, and then the weight is dm times g, of course. So the force from the top, from the surrounding fluid on the top, is P times the cross-sectional area A. The force from the bottom is the pressure at the bottom, which is P plus DP times the same cross-sectional area A. Since this slab is not going anywhere, it is in mechanical equilibrium, we know the net force on the slab must be zero. Okay, so let us figure out the net force on that slab. Okay, uh, let's say we choose upward as positive. Okay, the only positive force is the force of support from the surrounding fluid at the bottom. And that is P plus DP times the area A. Okay, there are two downward forces. One is the force from the top, minus PA. It's minus because it's, it goes downwards. And then another term, which is the weight of this slab, minus DM times G. Okay, let us simplify that. First of all, P plus DP times A minus PA. So PA cancel with that PA, and I'm only getting A times DP. That's what's left. Okay, minus DM times G. DM is the mass of this little slab here, and that can be expressed in terms of its density times its volume, okay? If the density is rho, and you have a G here, of course, uh, and then rho times DV, rho times DV, that will give you the mass, DM, all right? Okay, now what is DV equal to? DV is the volume of the slab, and that is the cross-section area times the thickness dy. Okay, so this is A D P minus rho G A dy. This is the net force exerted on this slab. And we know it has to equal to zero because the slab is in mechanical equilibrium. It is not going up or down or left or right. Okay, so these two terms must be equal. Let me equate them and let me cross out area A and I get DP equals to rho G dy. What does that tell me? It tells me that as we go from here to there, as we go deeper by a distance dy into the fluid, the pressure increases by this amount, rho G dy. Okay. If I integrate, I can find the pressure as a function of the depth. Let's integrate on both sides. Okay, here, the right hand side, depth y starts from zero and ends up at a certain value. Okay, y. Meanwhile, what happens to the pressure? The pressure starts from here, that's why you go to zero, end up there. Okay, so end up at 
whatever pressure is at depth y, the initial pressure at the surface. Now, is it zero? Well, not really. If this is a container of water, of course, over here at the top, you still have air pressure, right? So this is PA, okay? The atmospheric pressure. Now, the left-hand side, you can easily work out the integral, and that is P minus PA, right? The right-hand side, let's see now. Let's assume that the density is a constant, okay? That is an excellent approximation for liquids. And even for gases, as long as we're not talking about a huge change in depth from here to there, it's not miles, for example, um, the density is roughly still a constant. So I'm going to assume that's the case. I'm going to take that rho out because it's a constant. Rho g. And what you left is the integral of dy going from 0 to y. So that's rho gy, right? Okay. This tells us how the pressure changes as a function of the depth. As a matter of fact, let's write it down. P at a depth y equals P A. That's the air pressure at the top plus rho g y. Okay, this is the expression. The deeper you go, the greater the pressure. Okay. Um, how much is P A equal to? What is the atmospheric pressure? Okay. atmospheric pressure. That, of course, depends on the altitude. Okay, now what about sea level? Let's look at what happened at the sea level. Okay, what we can do is we can apply this same formula, but this time we don't have a fluid, we don't have a liquid actually, we just have air. Okay, so imagine this is the Earth, right? This is the Earth. Here's the surface of the Earth. And you have a whole column of air above you, right? Now, this part of the Earth has to support the weight of this entire column. Due to this weight of the column, of the air column, you can have a pressure here. That is the air pressure at the surface of the Earth, or at the sea level. What is that equal to? Well, you can apply this formula, except there is no PA at the top, because at the top there is no air. Okay, this is the edge of the atmosphere, so there is no air. Um, so that is zero. And this P here is the P at the bottom, that is PA, okay, so PA. What's that equal to? Rho g y. Okay. That rho is the density of air. Now there is one problem here because the density varies from here to there. You know the air is the densest here and is least dense at the top. Pretty much zero. What we need then is some sort of average density. Okay? Some sort of average density. Um, how much is the average density of air? Well, let's for simplicity, let's just do some estimation. Let's say the density varies linearly from the sea level up to the very top. This is not quite the case, but it won't give us wrong order of magnitude. We're just estimating here, okay? We're just estimating here. Uh, some sort of average density times g times the height h, okay, of the air column. So when you go up a distance h into the air, you basically uh, are at the upper edge of the atmosphere. Okay, we need to estimate average rho, we need to estimate h. So what is average rho equal to roughly? Well, we learned that at the sea level, okay, the, uh, the, uh, at, one, at the regular air pressure, the density of air is about 1.3 kilograms per meter cubed. We know it's an astonishingly large number. Most of us wouldn't quite believe that a cubic meter of air weighs about three pounds. We thought it would be a lot less, but actually that is the case. Okay, so that's about one point something kilo, kilograms per meter cubed. At the very top, of course, it's zero. So on average, let's say it's half of that, okay? So it's half of like, like 0.5, okay? 0.5 kilograms per meter cubed. Okay, G is not, it's about 10, okay? I'm only estimating here, don't be too accurate. 10 meters per second squared, okay? Times h, that is the height of the atmosphere. Okay, um, we need an estimation for that too. Let's see now, uh, how high is an atmosphere? Um, let's take a look at the height of the world's tallest mountain. That would be Mount Everest. How tall 
is Mount Everest. Well, Mount Everest is about 8,800 meters. Okay, it's about 8.8 .8 kilometers. Um, is that the edge of the atmosphere? Well, not quite, because even at the top of Mount Everest, you can still breathe. I mean, it's not very easily. You probably need an oxygen mask or whatever, but the air is thinner, but it's not quite zero. So how tall is the edge of the atmosphere? Um, let's do an estimation, okay, shall we? Let's say it's about twice as tall as Mount Everest. Okay, Mount Everest, uh, it's a little bit less than 9 kilometers tall. So let's say 18 or let's say 20 kilometers. Um, I, I just want to be, you know, make a good estimation. 20 kilometers, so it's 20 times 10 to the 3 meters, okay? Uh, that gives us an estimation of the air pressure at the sea level, okay? 0.5 times 10 times 20 times 10 to 3. What do we get? We get about 1 times 10 to the 5. The uh, unit here is the prime SI unit, and that is Newton per meter squared, or Pascal. That is the air pressure at the sea level. Our estimation is crude, yet it is remarkably accurate. We probably had canceling errors. Anyhow, a more detailed calculation shows, a detailed measurement, accurate measurement shows that PA is actually 1.013, okay, at standard temperature, which is 0 degrees Celsius. 1.013 times 10 to the 5 Pascal at sea level. Roughly speaking, we say it's 100,000 pascals, or 100,000 newtons per meter squared. Now that is quite a lot. Think about it. You have an area of one meter by one meter. How much is the weight of the air that has to be shouldered by this small area? It's 100,000 newtons. Okay, that's about 20,000 pounds. It's an enormous amount of pressure, if you think about it. Uh, we like to say that we're under a lot of pressure. You know what? This is literally true, okay? How much pressure does an average person have to shoulder? How much force do you have to shoulder? Well, that, of course, depends on a cross-section area of your shoulder. Uh, let's say uh, for an average person, uh, let's say you have from one, from one side, one arm to another arm, oh, let's say we're looking about, uh, say, 40 centimeters, shall we? 50 centimeters? Okay, let's say 0.4 meters. Okay, because I'm trying to estimate a cross-section area. Okay, times thickness, okay, from, to, from the front to the back, let's say, uh, how about, say, 0.2 meters, 20 centimeters. Okay, so that's some, some sort of cross-section area, okay, of the shoulder plus the head. So the area is roughly equal to this, and that is 0 0.08 meter squared. Now let's not be too picky, let's just say 0 0.1 meter squared as an estimation. Okay, what do we have? The uh, total force, okay, due to the weight of the air above you, that this area will have to support, okay, the weight equals the pressure times the air, area. That's the air pressure. Now the pressure, the air pressure is 1 times 10 to the 5 pascals, right? Times the area, 0.1 meter squared. So what do we have here? Well, we have a whopping 10 to the 4 pas uh, pascal meter squared. That's 10 thousand newtons and roughly speaking five newtons makes a pound so we divide it by five and that's about two thousand pounds that is the kind of force due to the weight of the air that our shoulders will have to provide and indeed when we say we're under a lot of pressure this is literally true okay the air pressure is a lot more than we think of because the air weighs a lot more than we think of um, but these numbers look incredibly large. We don't really feel, you know, something 2,000 pounds sitting on our shoulder, do we? What is going on here? Well, it's not because the pressure does not exist. Rather, it is because the pressure usually is balanced. Okay. Now, when we breathe, 
our lung is filled with air at about the same pressure as the pressure outside. So we have achieved a balance. It's just like you have a piece of paper, okay? You have a piece of paper, and what you do is you apply a large force on one side and large force on the other side, like this. Now, as long as these two forces are equal, these two pressures are equal, you can push them really, really hard, and the paper is not going either here or there, because these two fingers produce the same amount of pressure, so the thing is balanced. It doesn't mean there is no pressure, it only means the pressure is balanced. Now, once we lose that balance, that is when the air pressure will show dramatically, as a matter of fact. Uh, one experiment that one of our former students did, now he was a licensed pilot, so what he did was he took a Coke can, okay, a can of Coke, and he flew to a certain altitude where the air was thinner, of course, the pressure was lower, right? He drank that Coke, okay, at that altitude, so the coke was gone, it was replaced the air pressure at that level, which was, of course, lower than pressure at the sea level, right? And so he drank that coke, the bottle was empty, the can was empty, and then he sealed that can, okay? And he flew the airplane down. By the time the can reached back on sea level, guess what happened to the can? Well, yeah, it got crushed. Why? Because the outside pressure is now about 1 atm or what the standard atmospheric pressure which is a lot greater than the pressure at a high altitude when he, when he sealed this the this can so this is a situation where the pressure of the air is not balanced and shows up dramatically okay now the uh, air pressure 1 atm okay that's a common unit we use 1 atm that is about 1.01 .01 times 10 to the 5 Pascal. That is produced by the entire column of air above us, right? Miles and miles above. But we can also recreate this kind of pressure using water instead. Suppose you dive into water, okay? As the deeper you go, the greater the pressure you feel, right? And my question is, how deep do you have to dive into the water so that the pressure will increase by exactly 1 atm? Okay, we know how to do that because uh, the pressure underneath the surface of water at that at depth y is equal to rho g y. Okay, that is the pressure created by the depth of the water alone. It's not the air pressure outside. This rho is the density of water, not the density of air. We want this to be equal to 1 atm, right? Pa. 1 atm. Let's solve for y. That y is the depth of the water, which will give you a pressure of 1 atm. Okay, so what is y equal to? Let's see now. 1.01 .01 times 10 to the 5 Pascal divided by the density of water divided by g. Okay, density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, okay? And the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. You work this out, and you'll find it's a mere 10.3 meters. That's it. In other words, every time you dive an extra 10 meters or so, the pressure due to the water increases by 1 atm, that is one entire air pressure outside. Okay, so basically at a depth of only 10 meters above, about 32 feet below the surface of the water, the total pressure you have to experience is already twice the air pressure outside. Okay, and 10 meters or 32 feet, that's not much really. So. Imagine if you have to dive into deep water, the pressure will increase dramatically, and that is one big problem when it comes to diving. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, below a uh, certain level, you cannot do freestyle diving. You have to have protective gears, and at some point, you're gonna have to have to ride a submarine down there. And submarines are very very strong. Uh, they're built to be very tough because you have to sustain a tremendous amount of water pressure. Okay. Now imagine if the submarine dives to one mile below water. 
below the surface of water. What kind of pressure are we talking about here? One mile, that's 1,600 meters, roughly. Okay, every 10 meters will give you an extra ATM. So, how many ATMs are there? We're talking about 160 ATM. In other words, the pressure the submarine will have to sustain, will have to overcome, is about 160 times the air pressure. That is a tremendous amount of pressure. For this reason, um, it is difficult, if not impossible, to get into the deep trenches of water. In fact, we don't know much about the deepest trenches of the ocean because we have not uh, been able to send a submarine down there because the pressure there is simply too large to overcome with current technology. So some say we know actually less about what's going on in the deepest ocean trenches than we know about the surface of the moon because of the tremendous amount of pressure there which makes exploration very difficult to do.